Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild update. Today, we're working on the Cadillac, and uh, if you remember from the last episode, we were going through and we're resizing and getting our rods ready and waiting for the pistons. So, rods are resized on the big end, and new uh, bolts are pressed in, and I also have my new bearings. So, today, I'm going through and I'm putting my bearings in, getting all that done, and, and measuring what my crank needs to be cut to because that's down at the crank grinder and he's basically just waiting for numbers for me. So I thought it made sense to kind of go through in a little more detail than maybe we normally do in how we get to those numbers as far as clearance is concerned for the oil and all that side of things. And then most importantly at the end of the day here we're going to get over to Thurlby's because our pistons are in so we're going to get them stuck onto the rods and also get that block board so then we can keep moving on with the process. What I'm doing is I'm going to pre-assemble the rods with the bearing halves in them and it's it's pretty straightforward and easy you have a little tang on them you line them up line that tang up and then slide it down in okay and then of course the same thing on the cap. Now I always use my fingers, you can use a rag or whatever, but make sure there's no lint or dirt or something in between you know, the two surfaces because that will change what your OD is going to, or your ID in this case, is going to measure. So slide them in, make sure everything's good that way, and then again you line those tangs up as well so they both go on the same side. And just like when you go to assemble them, you're going to want to use a good quality assembly lube. In this case, these are ARP bolts. I always use their recommended ultra torque. And put some on the thread itself. And then also the mating surface. So if there was a washer or something in between here, I would throw it on the washer. But uh, given that there's just these nuts, if I put it on the rod bolt or the rod say, surface, that will do it as well. And the idea is behind that, assembly lube is it gives you a consistent torque, meaning you're not getting into a spot where you have a dry patch or rust or something along that lines um, on your fastener. So as you come in and you tighten these down, you get a good, even, consistent clamp load because that's what you're trying to accomplish is clamping these two parts together. And as, of course, as the two faces come together and they kind of smear, if they smear with a even amount of resistance, your, your clamp load is going to be more consistent. Okay, so they're pre-assembled. Uh, I like to use a rod vise. That is what they're for. You can get by, of course, in the vise itself. The idea is you don't want to hold down here and torque here because now you're going to be twisting this rod and putting in some stresses that just flat out don't need to happen. So you hold it down as tight as you can. Down, I should say, you hold it as close to the, the nuts as you can, but you do need to have it on the rod side, not the cap side, because remember you're pulling the cap to the rod and you wouldn't want to have it in the vise and then binding up. Now these rods get, uh, rod bolts get torqued to uh, 55 foot pounds per ARP spec. And what I'm gonna do by, a little bit by feel is I'm just gonna work them down evenly. Because you don't wanna just torque one side all the way and then torque the other side because it will tend to cock things around. If they're a pinned piece, then of course you put a bind on that pin. Okay, so now they're torqued. The idea is, again, you're trying to simulate how they're going to be in the engine. So obviously the rods are going to be torqued. This side size changes as the cap comes to the rod and tightens things down. And now I'm just going to take my comparator. Now, this is not a, I'm going to call it a gauge. This is not a micrometer, meaning this is not going to give me, this is the exact size of this. What it's going to give me is a comparator a comparison. So what you do is you use your micrometer here on the stand. I set it to the number that it's supposed to be. Come in here, zero up my gauge, 
So now I am reading uh, the number of the, of the whole. So in this case, um, our number is, on the, on the rod bearing size, is 2 inch, 240 and a half. So that's what I set this to. So when I come into the rod end, anything different than zero is bigger or smaller. As I come in here, if, I, if my gauge bottoms out or peaks at zero, which it is, that tells me that my rod size is what I set it to over here. So again, in our case here, it's the two inch, it's 2.205. Uh, um, yes, I went out to the half a thou uh, measurement to be as accurate as possible. Now what I'm going to do is with that number, I went through and obviously did the other seven already, but uh, so with that number, they are all consistent. They're exactly what they, I know exactly what they are now. Now I can take that number, subtract off the amount of oil clearance I want, and then tell the crank grinder that I want that journal size to be whatever that number is. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just gonna take this number and subtract, uh, in this case, uh, two thousandths uh, based on the size. So <laughs> I got a lot of scribble marks here in the back. At the end of the day, I am going to tell him that I want my journal, my rod journals cut to two, two inch, 238 thousandths. Okay, so simply put, this diameter is two inch, 240. And I want two thousandths clearance for oil. So I'm gonna have the crank journal ground to two inch, 238, 2,000 smaller than what the hole is on the uh, big end of the rods. So it's pretty straightforward, but it can get confusing. Just take your time and uh, walk through. Quite honestly, the biggest mistake I always make is, well, which side of the zero I'm looking at, and I get the number bigger, I get it small, I check it constantly and refresh my head to make sure I'm thinking in the right direction. Helps you avoid some mistakes. So right now, I'm gonna get these rods boxed up, take them over to Thurlby's. We're gonna hang the pistons, and then Mikey's gonna bore the block, hone it, deck that surface, and then I'm gonna get the block back over here. I can measure and I can deburr the outside of the block, and then the block will be ready for paint. But uh, I gotta get moving. There we go, we're at Thurlby's. Mikey's got the block deck. And now it's on the boring bar. 30 thousandths is uh, going to clean up the block, so we'll get fresh pistons in there after we're honed. We'll be good to go. All right, so I had Mike go ahead and just assemble the rods and pistons. Quite frankly, he was done before he was gonna show me how to do it uh, time-wise. So it just made sense to have him do it. But it's a pretty simple process. So you take the small end of the rod, put it in the heater, and then he's watching the temperature as it changes color coming up the rod. So he, what he was saying is the bottom edge will be red, and then just as the gray starts to get about halfway, then he knows that by, from his experience that the rod is swelled enough and, uh, and then he puts the piston into this fixture, has a little push pin, and, and there's a stop on there. So as he pushes the, the wrist pin into the piston and then through the rod that's, again, swelled up, pushes that real quick, goes to the stop, and that's it. When the rod cools, it comes back to size and pinches onto the wrist pin. And that is that. So pistons are assembled, block is bored, and now Mikey's just gonna hone the, hone the block to size for our pistons, and then the block goes back over to our shop and we'll wrap up the measurements and get it dressed up for paint.
So that's it for this time. We're uh, just gonna wrap this up, get it clean, be ready for paint. So the next time you see us, we'll be over at Travers Body and Paint in the paint booth, spraying on some color. So uh, I gotta get my stuff done quickly here. And you need to get out in the shop, get your work done so you can go enjoy the day. See ya.